Today is going to be kind of a vlog style video. I want to take you along with me as I do a little bit of cleaning, beginning my spring cleaning, a little bit of decorating, and chatting about having a heart for hospitality. If you are new, I encourage you to subscribe and leave me a comment below. I would love to get to know you better. Be sure and stay to the end because I want to share a thrifted find that involves silver that I'm very excited about. And I hope you enjoy today's video. So many of the tasks that we do day in and day out are mundane. Now that's not to say that they aren't fulfilling and are not a blessing to our households, but they are mundane because we do them repetitively. And I hope that this encourages you as a fellow mama or homemaker to be steadfast and faithful in your calling. I believe that one of the biggest aspects of hospitality is cultivating a clean and tidy as well as beautiful atmosphere for others to come into. One of my goals for 2024 was to become more hospitable. I had made the excuse that our home is so small but as I have been reading my Bible, it says that we are to be given to hospitality. And so I am trying to work on it more and more. So I have been doing a little bit of spring cleaning. I definitely have had spring fever. And I am not ashamed to say that I am just now taking down the very last of my Christmas slash winter greenery. I don't think there is a magical date that you need to take down certain kinds of decor. I think it's all about what is best for you and your family. We all live in different climates and the seasons change at different times for us. And so I think that it is important to do whatever works best for you. And for me this year, it was leaving up the winter greenery into mid-February. And then now I am ready for a clean slate and begin looking toward spring. When I was growing up, I remember my mother using mayonnaise to dust her live greenery. And I haven't heard of anyone else doing this. I don't know if there was a particular reason, if it was supposed to be good for the plant or she just found that it shined it up nicely. But I decided to try it on this indoor plant it needed a good dusting for sure, and it made a world of difference. Look at this fun find that I found last year while I was thrifting. This big bag of silverware was $16.99, I believe it said, but I got it for half of that. And I thought I would use the sugar mold to display it in for a very simple centerpiece for our table. I didn't realize exactly what I was getting because I didn't open the bag at the thrift store and so I didn't know what kind of condition it was in or how many pieces were in it. But when I got it out, there are enough to 
set a table for 12 with this silverware. Now these two spoons did not match. They were just thrown in, but it has the little butter server and the sugar server. And then there are 12 knives, dinner forks, soup spoons, and 22 of the smaller spoons. This one looks like it might have gone through a garbage disposal and got nicked up. But minus that one and one more, there are 22 of the smaller forks. So 12 would be for like a teaspoon maybe and then a dinner or dessert spoon. So I saw a hack where you take or you line your sink with foil and then put in your silver with boiling hot water and the Arm & Hammer washing soda. And then I also added a little bit of salt and let that sit for an hour and it just releases all of the tarnish and things that have gotten built up on the silver. And when I was finished, I could not believe the results. It really did a good job. Even my family was in awe. And this is what was left over. It was pretty yucky, but the silver washed up beautifully. And I rinsed it really well, laid it out to dry, and then just kind of ran over each piece. I probably could even polish it more, but I kind of like the patina on it at this point. So put it into my sugar mold. I love how heavy it is. When my husband and I picked out our silverware when we first got married, he wanted something substantial because he has pretty big hands and he doesn't like a limp fork. And this feels very substantial and I love the classic design on it. Not too flowery, just very elegant. I always like to have a pitcher of sweet tea made in the fridge. My husband drinks this pretty much all the time. And my mom taught me that if you use a fourth a teaspoon of baking soda, you don't have to add as much tea. So if you're sh low on tea, or if you would like stronger tea without using more tea bags, put in a fourth a teaspoon of soda. Another thing that I like to have on hand is cookie doll balls in the freezer. Now I'm trying to work on this because a lot of times we just want to eat up the cookie dough or cookies right away, but if I make extra and put in the freezer, then we can have them for guests that stop by. So today I'm going to try one of my husband's favorites, molasses cookies or molasses crinkle cookies as they are sometimes called. This cookbook was given to us at our wedding reception and my mother-in-law had people sign it as like a guest book here in California since we got married in Texas. We had a reception here in California and this was the cookbook that people signed. And so I'm going to be making these molasses cookies which I have not made in a very long time. And I was getting all of my ingredients together and realized that I had no molasses. <laughs> so I had to make a quick trip down to my mother-in-law's and borrow some molasses because I had my mouth set for these cookies. So funny, everything but the molasses. But thankfully she had some and we are going to get these mixed up. There is a recipe on the molasses bottle if you want to try that out. The difference in the ones that I made is that I used real butter instead of shortening. I used half store-bought butter as you can tell by the lighter color and then the more yellow butter is our homemade butter that we make from our cow cream. And so 
used the fresh butter and these are really a healthy cookie. You have the molasses that is so rich in iron. When I was pregnant, my midwife encouraged me to use molasses because of the iron content. My four-year-old is videoing here for me, so it might be a little shaky, but she is a videographer in training, so she did a good job getting these all mixed in the KitchenAid, and then you refrigerate the dough for about an hour, and then I got it back out and just covered them, coated them in some granulated sugar and pop them on the cookie stone and baked them and they were definitely a delicious treat with some left over. I wanted to give our table a facelift and my mother-in-law got me this cute little white picture from the thrift store and so I decided to go ahead and get out my tulips that I purchased on Amazon last year. I love these tulips. They are so lifelike and make a beautiful arrangement for spring. So I put those in the white pitcher and then I just used some placements that I have had for years that I got at our churchyard sale and put those out for some texture and then used my cream and green napkins with some napkin rings that my father-in-law made from olive wood and then my sugar mold with the new silverware in it and then put our plate of molasses cookies on here. What I am trying to cultivate is a heart of hospitality that whenever a friend or neighbor stops by, I am prepared with a tidy home with something warm or cold for them to sip on and a nice treat to offer them while we have a conversation. It's not about perfection, but it is about cultivating a heart of hospitality that welcomes both the friend and stranger to a, a place of refuge, a place of warmth, a place of enjoyment. I hope this video inspires you to do the same.